I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 epic movie villain songs. We have flattened their fingers. We have branded their buns. Nothing is working. Send in the nuns. Send the flood, send the flu. Anything that you can do to a little, little, little. The power of the music of the For this list, we're looking at the most entertaining musical numbers dedicated to live-action villains, anti-heroes, or misunderstood antagonists. So, what's your favorite villain song? Let us know in the comments. All right, let's get to it. Number 20, A Professional Pirate, Muppet Treasure Island. Tim Curry as Long John Silver in a Muppet movie? It's a recipe for success. The recipe wouldn't be complete without a villain song, and thankfully, a professional pirate marks the spot. Though you could be a doctor, or perhaps a financier, my boy, why not consider a more challenging career? The only downside is that it's Mr. Silver's only number. Whereas Jim sees pirates as irredeemable murderers, Silver and his crew have a different perspective. This is reflected through the jolly lyrics and upbeat melody reminiscent of a classic sea shanty. It's how you look at buccaneers that makes them bad or good. And I see us as members of a noble brotherhood. The song captures the camaraderie, pride, and thirst for adventure that come with being a pirate, practically convincing the audience to enlist. And since Silver's crew has a member named Black Eyed P, he naturally gets a solo. I could have been a contender. <laughs> Carried by Curry's unmatched charisma and the Muppets' satirical wit, it is definitely a contender. Number 19, Every Little Piece, Pete's Dragon. With a top hat, a goatee, and devious name, Dr. Terminus makes it no secret to the audience that he is the bad guy. Of course, the lack of subtlety is part of what makes this villain so fun. Think of what a dragon heart would bring. Wrapped up in a ribbon and a string. Along with his assistant Hoagie, Terminus plots to slice Pete the dragon up and sell him piece by piece for an enormous profit. Jeez, when you think about it, this is actually a pretty gruesome plan. But the song appropriately keeps in tune with the film's lighthearted tone. I'll bind him up, grind him up, lop him up, chop him up. Can't you hear that jingle jangle sound? The number conveys just how much Terminus enjoys being wicked, practically salivating over every dragon part and every pound of money. Terminus and Hoagie are like two kids in a candy store, or a severed dragon part store in this case. It's money, money, money by the money, money, money by the money, money, money by the money, 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 money. Number 18, Bad Guys, Bugsy Malone. Director Alan Parker's debut feature takes an original approach to the gangster genre casting an ensemble of child actors against a prohibition backdrop. Bugsy Malone combines the grit of a mob picture with the charm of an elaborate school play. The music of Paul Williams also strikes just the right chord, particularly bad guys. We made the big time malicious and mad. We're the very best at being bad. Life could have taken Fat Sam Stachetto's gang down many routes, but crime was their natural calling. With a spring in every step and every lyric, the song finds the middle ground between being a wise guy and being a smartass, demonstrating how going bad can feel so good. With all the talent we had, with little practice, we made every black twist, with the very best at being bad. By the end, though, you may find that these bad guys are not so rotten after all. Maybe they just need a little love. Number 17, The Inquisition, History of the World Part 1. Not many would think to center a lavish musical number around an organization as infamous as the Spanish Inquisition, but if there's one thing Mel Brooks is known for, it's tackling taboo subject matter with a smile. Let's begin the Inquisition. Look out, Sam. We have a mission. 
to convert the Jew. The Inquisition borrows notes from the likes of Busby Berkeley and Esther Williams, although the setting is grimier than what you'd usually see in one of their pictures. The torture devices are cleverly integrated into the choreography, as painful as they may look. I said pretty please, I bent their ears, now I'll work on their knees! The shocking imagery is balanced out by the irony that Brooks himself is Jewish, and the true target of ridicule is the Inquisition. The Inquisition, fortunately, isn't here to stay. But this tune will not be leaving your head anytime soon. And it's here to Number 16. Slick Scott Pilgrim vs. The World Many would describe Scott Pilgrim as an underrated comedy and comic book adaptation. We'd go as far as to say that it's also an underrated musical. We are sex bomb and we are here to watch Scott Pilgrim kick your teeth in! Even if it doesn't quite fall under that genre, music plays an integral role. Performed by Matthew Patel, one of Ramona's seven evil exes, this song gives Scott a taste of the insanity he'll have to endure to be with his dream girl. If you want to fight me, what? Ha, you're not the brightest. Keeping with the film's video game theme, you can totally imagine a song like this popping up in a boss battle. Slick also wouldn't feel out of place in a Bollywood number. My demon hipster chicks. Tell me, Maddie. I'm talking the dog. I know I'm Slick. Patel may have fireballs and vampiric backup dancers, but Scott proved slicker in combat. We just wish all the other exes got a song. Number 15. Stars, Les Miserables. There, out in the darkness. While not everyone is a fan of Russell Crowe's singing voice, Stars remains a pivotal number in the stunning adaptation of Les Miserables. Crow plays Javert, a police inspector hell-bent on recapturing Jean Valjean. This understated song provides greater insight into his obsession. In Javert's eyes, Jean Valjean is a fugitive following in Lucifer's footsteps. Meanwhile, Javert views himself as a righteous man carrying out God's will. Looking down on the city from a steep ledge, he vows to put Jean Valjean back behind bars. On the doorway to paradise, that those who falter and those who fall must pay the price. Throughout the film, Javert begins to see that matters aren't so black and white. Once his ethics are called into question, however, he isn't sure how to live with himself. Shall his crimes be reprieved? Number 14. I Want You, She's So Heavy, Across the Universe. Directed by Julie Taymor, this jukebox musical interprets several Beatles songs through a unique lens. For example, John Lennon wrote I Want You for Yoko Ono. In the film, the song goes from a man longing for a woman to Uncle Sam wanting to enlist Max. I want you. I want you so bad. With the draft still in effect, it doesn't matter what Max wants. It goes to show that music can take on numerous different meanings. The same can be said about figures like Uncle Sam. To many, he's a symbol of strength and inspiration. To a reluctant draftee under the influence like Max, he's a horrifying poster child for war. The nightmare fuel just keeps coming as Max is confronted by stone-faced army recruiters on a conveyor belt of madness. Number 13, Just the Two of Us, Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me. Hit it! This is a very sensitive subject. Dr. Evil hates Austin Powers about as much as he adores Mini-Me. In this scene, the doctor celebrates his archenemy's capture while also embracing his pint-sized clone. As a follow-up to their One of Us piano duet, Dr. Evil and Mini-Me perform a rendition of Just the Two of Us. Parodying Will Smith's 1997 version, Dr. Evil raps about his relationship with his son Scott. Unlike Will Smith, though, Dr. Evil isn't exactly proud of his boy. 
As a matter of fact, Scotty's only second best compared to Mini-Me. The number showcases the villain's eccentric side while also delving into his complicated family life. Plus, who knew Mini-Me could hit such a low note? You and I. Number 12. Beelzeboss, The Final Showdown, Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. This is an epic villain song worthy of an epic final showdown. This comedy builds to a literal battle of the bands between our heroes and Satan, who is cleverly played by legendary rocker Dave Grohl. We challenge you to a rocker. Give us one chance to rock your socks off. Tenacious D has their work cut out for them, as Satan has reclaimed the pick of destiny. Satan puts the pedal to the heavy metal with his drums, a guitar, and profanity in spades. He may have the powers of hell, but Tenacious D's music is full of soul. This still isn't enough to save Cage from a dismal fate, but Jable's guitar is. Knocking off part of Satan's horn, the Prince of Darkness is dragged back to hell. Now that is what we call an epic final bow. Number 11. I Want It Now – Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory We know the internet has unofficially dubbed Grandpa Joe this film's true villain, but I've Got a Golden Ticket just doesn't strike us as a villain song. I Want It Now, on the other hand, matches Veruca Salt's antagonistic nature to a T. I want my geese to lay gold eggs for Easter. It will, sweetheart. At least a hundred a day. Anything you say. And by the way… What? The song has become something of an anthem for bratty children. And let's be honest, bratty adults. We've all met somebody spoiled to the core who demands instant gratification. As obnoxious as those people can be, Veruca's signature song doesn't become annoying at least not to the audience. I want today, I want tomorrow, I want to wear them like braids in my hair and I don't want to share them! This is thanks to the inviting set design, the humorous lyrics, and actress Julie Don Cole, who filmed the scene on her 13th birthday. Of course, nobody's complaining when Veruca gets the shoot. Don't care how I want it now! <laughs> Number 10. Tomorrow Belongs to Me – Cabaret Out of context, Tomorrow Belongs to Me may not sound like a villain song. On its own, you might be tricked into thinking that it's an uplifting tune about today's youth building a better tomorrow. The sun on the meadow is a merry one. The stag in the forest runs free. Watching Cabaret all seems innocent enough as a youthful voice is heard and others watch in delight. Once it's revealed that the singer is wearing a Hitler youth uniform, the song immediately goes from happy to horrifying. What's even more disturbing is what almost everyone in attendance, children included, begins to proudly sing along. To them, Hitler isn't a monster, but a triumphant leader. For modern audiences, it can feel like gazing into a parallel universe. Unfortunately, this song accurately mirrors one of the darkest chapters in human history. You still think you can control them? Number 9. Little Girls – Annie Whichever adaptation of Annie you prefer, most would agree that you cannot top Carol Burnett as Miss Agatha Hannigan. Burnett showcases why she was born for this role through her performance of Little Girls. Little girls, little girls, everywhere I turn, I can see them. Cruel and constantly drunk on the job, Hannigan isn't fit to run an orphanage, yet Burnett's comedic timing makes the character lovable and even relatable, especially to anyone who's ever had to look after a couple of hyperactive children. If I ring little nets, surely I would get an acquittal. We 
could tell through the song that Hannigan is at her wit's end. Drinking everything in sight and fantasizing about a life without little girls is her only escape. We can't think of an image that sums up Hannigan better than a bathtub of booze, which she uses a paddle to mix. Number 8. The Legend of Miss Baltimore Crabs Hairspray Velma Von Tussel is a villainess that's stuck in the past, fighting change around every corner. Step back and turn. Front step. Cha-cha-cha. Tammy Sharper. During an audition for The Corny Collins Show, she isn't at all impressed with the turnout. In a skillfully choreographed number, Velma remembers the good old days when she was crowned Miss Baltimore Crabs. But how times have changed, these girls must be blind or completely deranged. But times seem to halt when I was Miss Baltimore Crabs. Along with her daughter and a few other mean girls, she shuns the contestants for their appearances. Tracy is ultimately kicked out for her views on integration, demonstrating just how backwards Velma's mindset is. Velma might be a horrible human being, but we'd be lying if we said this song didn't make us want to do the cha-cha-cha. This one will never get a date in those hand-me-down clothes. <laughs> Kid, she'll never get a date till Daddy buys her a new nose. Number 7. Last Midnight, Into the Woods This adaptation of Stephen Sondheim and James Lapine's classic musical interprets various fairy tale characters from a unique perspective. You're not good, you're not bad, you're just nice. I'm not good, I'm not nice, I'm just right. While Meryl Streep's witch is essentially your basic antagonist, the other characters aren't necessarily good or bad. As the witch puts it, they're just nice. Everyone here makes mistakes, amounting to happy endings that aren't all that happy. You'll just do what you do in midnight. Rather than taking responsibility for their own actions, however, they blame the witch who arguably did start the chain of events. This sets the stage for a rousing number where the witch decides to embrace her wicked side. As the ultimate mic drop, she places a curse on our supposed heroes before disappearing underground. And the doom, and the Number 6. Cell Block Tango, Chicago Granted, the six inmates behind this rousing song are not necessarily villains. Most of them have blood on their hands, though, and it is debatable if their actions were justified. As far as they're concerned, their victims had it coming. He only had himself to blame. If you'd have been there, if you'd have seen it, I bet you you would have done the same. Ha, six. Uh, Cicero. Shit. Chicago blends the glamour of the stage with harsh reality. Few sequences pull this off as flawlessly as Cell Block Tango, as Roxy envisions prison chatter through a theatrical lens. Using minimal props, the choreography paints a vivid picture of every story. So that night when he came home from work, I fixed him his drink, as usual. You know, some guys just can't hold their arsenic. The only one who claims innocence is Catalan Hunyak Holinsky, who ironically meets the grimmest fate. It all builds to an electrifying finale in this masterclass of lighting, cinematography, production design, and editing. This number is so much fun, it should be a crime. Pop. Six. Squish. Uh-uh. Cicero. Lipschitz. Number 5. Pretty Women, Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Judge Turpin is the most despicable person in this musical, wrongfully imprisoning Benjamin Barker, assaulting his wife, and caging up his daughter like a bird. Of course, this film's titular character isn't exactly a saint either. In this chilling scene, both men come together and sing about their monstrous plans. And who may it be said is your intended son? I would. Unaware that Sweeney Todd is Barker, Turpin dreams of forcing Joanna into marriage. All the while, Todd prepares to slit his enemy's throat. Pretty women Sitting in the window As dark as the subject matter is, the song is hauntingly calm and even soothing. 
As Todd's razor grows closer to Turpin's neck, though, the melody becomes more and more heart-pounding until we reach the final curtain. Number four, Feed Me, Get It? Little Shop of Horrors. A truly great villain can corrupt even the most innocent souls. The kindly Seymour Krellborn is taken aback upon realizing that his plant, Audrey II, can talk. With a deep, booming voice, Audrey II demands blood, and lots of it. Feed me! Does it have to be mine? Feed me! Where am I supposed to get it? Feed me, Seymour. Through a rockin' villain song, the plant motivates Seymour to feed him by killing people. Although the promises of fame, fortune, and love tempt Seymour, he still has reservations about committing murder. That is, until he sets his eyes on a cocky dentist. Feed me, Seymour. I can grow up big and strong. <laughs> you eat blood, Audrey, too. Let's face it. How am I supposed to keep on feeding you? Kill people? I make it worth your while. What? While Seymour continues to feed the plant, he eventually sees Audrey II for what he really is during the Oscar-nominated number Mean Green Mother from Outer Space. It's gotta end. It's gotta stop right here. Better wait a minute. Uh, you better hold the phone. Better mind your manners. Better change your tone. Number three, I put a spell on you. Hocus Pocus. The rain over there. <laughs> Curses and music go hand in hand for the Sanderson sisters. To lure Salem's little children, Sarah Sanderson sings a hypnotic tune with the essence of a lullaby. <laughs> Of course, the most enchanting musical number in the movie has got to be the witch's rendition of I Put a Spell on You. Winifred, Mary, and Sarah put an upbeat spin on this rock and roll classic. I put a spell on you, and now you're gone. With Bette Midler providing lead vocals, the sisters cast a spell on the adults of Salem, not to mention the home viewing audience. If you want people to dance until they die, we cannot think of a catchier tune to expire to. Number two, Magic Dance, Labyrinth. What kind of magic spell to use? The audience is supposed to root against the bad guy, but that proves exceedingly difficult when a villain is this much fun. It's impossible not to like Jareth the Goblin King, played by the invaluable David Bowie. In addition to starring, Bowie wrote and recorded multiple original songs for Labyrinth. The standout is easily the show-stopping Magic Dance. As little baby Toby breaks out in tears, Jareth and his minions perform a number that's guaranteed to put a smile on anyone's face. Toe tapping, energetic, and of course, magical, we could dance all night to this song. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sweet Transvestite – The Rocky Horror Picture Show I'm just a sweet transvestite. Dr. Frankenfurter is another villain the audience can't help but love. In this uproarious number, we're introduced to the sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. Like the rest of the film, the song is bizarre, random, and overflowing with uncomfortable sexual tension. Well, you got caught with a flat wheel. How about that? If you're in the mood for something totally off the wall, however, you are bound to have a good time. What's more, Tim Curry kills it with this scene, lighting up the silver screen with his charisma, comedic timing, and unusual brand of sexuality. Whenever an audience watches the Rocky Horror Picture Show, they always await this song with great anticipation. So I'll remove the cause. 
<laughs> but not the symptom. <laughs> The overabundance of Tim Curry on this list makes me very happy. Also, every single time I see I've Got a Spell on You, I start singing that song for days. So, which song on this list are you gonna be singing for days? Be sure to let us know in the comments or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya.